Oh, it's my pleasure today to talk to you about careers in molecular medicine, nanobiotechnology, and nanotechnology. I know all of you are those who have finished your undergraduate degree and you're looking for opportunities at the PG level. And uh, it's an exciting time. And I'm really pleased to bring to your attention some new opportunities uh, in cutting edge areas that I think all of you should consider. My background, just very briefly, I know I've been introduced, but just very briefly, I spent 20 years in the US as a research scientist and as a teacher in a major university, in a top 100 university. And uh, I was exposed to very many new unconventional areas which have actually taken root and done extremely well. So when I came back in 2006 to India, I really wanted to bring in these new perspectives to India and to expose our young people uh, to these new areas. And so we started a center in 2006 called Center for Nanosciences and Molecular Medicine, which has really taken off in India. And you are all the young minds which are the future of our country. And so it's, it's really a joy for me to be able to address all of you very briefly about some of these opportunities. So today I'll talk about these new fields and as I said, this is an exciting time because in India, a lot of new cutting edge areas are taking shape. These new areas which weren't there 30 years ago is now really developing well in India and is becoming successful as well. And uh, a lot of companies have started up in these areas, including small startups, because people are enthusiastic about developing products and developing new techniques and devices and so on. And so a lot of startups and the government is encouraging a lot of startups. So in this kind of an environment, there is a lot of opportunities for young people. Furthermore, multinational companies are coming to India and setting up shop in here because they see the huge market, they see the talent pool. And so they really want to take advantage of that. And even if you don't look, if you look outside companies, if you look at research, India has become very competitive in research and its capacity and capability has also gone up tremendously because of all the huge investments that government is making in research. In fact, if you look at one particular area like nanotechnology where I'm involved in, India is the number three country in the world in terms of number of papers that are published in this area and these are good quality papers. So in these cutting edge areas where, which is cutting edge even in the West, in these cutting edge areas, India has taken a leap forward and a lot of opportunities are opening up. Opening up. And so R&D career is also something that you should all be looking at. And so let's, uh, my feeling is we have gone past looking at conventional ways of thinking when you're thinking about a career. That is, I want to be a doctor, I want to be an engineer. That's passé now, and you have all, by even coming here and exploring these new areas, you are also saying the same thing, that we need to be more creative when we are looking at our careers. So I've put some top emerging areas of activity in India. There's information technology, there's biotechnology, there's nanotechnology, there's nanobiotechnology. You see how integrated some of these fields are. Molecular medicine, manufacturing technologies, robotics, artificial intelligence. You probably heard of some of these interesting new fields. Cognitive science or brain science, educational technologies. Um, and all of these new areas are not hypothetical areas. These are areas that are really developing in India, really doing well, taking root, giving jobs. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, the highlighted, yellow highlighted areas, which at our Center for Nanosciences and Molecular Medicine, we are offering, we're doing a lot of research, we're developing things. And there is an opportunity to really learn and train in a very cutting edge interdisciplinary environment to become a well-trained professional. So uh, the key about this area is that it is interdisciplinary. Interdisciplinary means unlike in the old days, okay, I do mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, I do botany, zoology, etc. Today, you are looking at an interdisciplinary field. 
So the field has different components. For example, I've drawn these three circles. One is basic science. It could be physics, it could be biology, it could be genetics, etc. And there's medical science, which is pathology, it could be cardiology, it could be neurology. So it's more clinically oriented fields of application. Then there's engineering and technology. So engineering and technology no longer now stands by itself. It's very closely integrated with other fields. Basic sciences is integrated with biology. It's integrated with medical science. So having an environment, having a laboratory environment and, a, and an educational environment where these are actually brought together and a student gets exposed to all of these things is the need of the hour. And students really have to have this kind of an opportunity or a foundational platform where we can work in an interdisciplinary environment. So uh, the heart of a university is this inspiration to give to society to be very interdisciplinary and innovative. And that comes from our Chancellor Amma, whose idea is that the university should contribute in a, in a very big way, in unique ways, in creative ways, to solve the problems of our society. So that's what is called education for life, or initiating and guiding research, which has a societal benefit. So all of these things is something that we emphasize a lot in our university. So I want to spend a little bit of time now, start uh, talking about our uh, center. It's called the Center for Nanosciences and Molecular Medicine, which was started in 2006 when I came back from the US. And it has really grown very rapidly. We had now over 500 publications, 50 PhDs graduated from here, and a lot of research, a lot of funding, and that is reflective of what is happening nationwide in these cutting edge areas. And so we are the number one center in nanosciences and molecular medicine, uh, in part because we have the facilities and we are tied to a major super specialty hospital. So we have all the resources that are required to offer these kinds of interdisciplinary programs. So I just uh, wanted to show you a picture of when our beloved former late President Abdul Kalam came to our center. He also heard about all the work going on. And I'm showing him uh, some of the research that is going on, examples, and he was listening very keenly. And at this point, I want to interrupt with a brief video about our center. Uh, it's only about four minutes or so, four to four and a half minutes. So please watch because the video very clearly talks about the programs and facilities and all that are there, which is very crucial for having an interdisciplinary program of this sort. So I'll let you watch that uh, video briefly. An immense passion for science is vital to push boundaries of research, but the most important factor is the inspiration to change lives. Amrita Center for Nanosciences and Molecular Medicine was started with this vision and has been constantly striving to attain excellence in education and research. We are India's first nanobio center and one of the thematic units of excellence under the nano mission generously funded by the Department of Science and Technology Government of India. In addition, immense support from the Department of Biotechnology and the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy has helped us be where we are today. If you look at human history, cancer is one of the toughest diseases we ever faced with. At Amarda, we have a major cancer nanomedicine program where we develop nanomedicines that specifically detect and kill cancer cells and cancer stem cells. This is a unique protein nanomedicine which was developed for cancer therapy. He we use two human proteins which are self-assembled to form a caudal nanoparticle. This is a nanofibrous polymeric implant to treat brain cancer. This implant can deliver multiple drugs for a long period in the brain without affecting any other part of the body. Theragnosis is an emerging technique wherein we can combine diagnosis and therapy together. Here in the center we have developed this doped calcium phosphate nanoparticles for image guided treatment of cancer using MRI, optical, ultrasound and nuclear properties. This is a simple light based nano sensor 
for the detection of oral cancer patients at an early stage. Here we used confocal Raman spectrometallurgy method for its detection. We can use this technology at community level for large scale screening of oral cancer patients. Molecular medicine is an upcoming field that has immense potential in identifying specific molecular tools for disease diagnosis, treatment, prognosis and prevention. Proteomics Laboratory's motto is research from bedside to bedside and back to bedside. In this regard, we have identified molecules specific for central nervous system leukemia as well as for neurodegenerative disorder and multiple sclerosis. And apart from the identification of these molecules, we have developed an in-house low-cost, commercially viable protein purification system with which we could develop diagnostic kits which is affordable to common men. My stem cell lab in collaboration with Dr. Krishnakumar Menon developed a three-dimensional bone marrow niche-like condition for testing the chemosensitivity of leukemic stem and progenitor cells. This can be used as an effective in vitro drug screening platform. Regenerative medicine and drug delivery are other promising areas in medical research. In our lab, we have actually developed the novel technique of uh, 3D spinning wherein we have got these polymeric threads which can be developed into continuous yarns and that can be made further into fabrics of this kind which can be drug loaded and can also be developed into vascular grafts that are currently under testing in rabbit models. The backbone of the center is its state-of-the-art facilities that house some of the most most sophisticated and advanced equipment needed for research. These research facilities are supported by Government of India grants from DBT, DST, ICMR, CSIR, UGC and MNRE. The DST Amrita Animal MRI facility houses a 7 Tesla high resolution imaging system that is used routinely by researchers for live animal imaging studies. The DBT Amrita TEM facility has a high-resolution field emission transmission electron microscope that is capable of atomic level characterization. The DBT Amrita confocal imaging facility accommodates a two-photon laser confocal microscope along with a Raman imaging system. The animal facility at Amrita houses both small and large animals for research purposes. It also contains a nude mice facility for those studies that require immunocompromised animals. The Animal Cardiac Catheterization Facility houses a motorized state-of-the-art C-arm that is used for major cardiovascular studies in large animals. With the expertise and infrastructure available at ACNSMM, we have been able to develop products with translational potential. With the help of DBT and DST, we have now built a 6,000 square feet nano GMP facility that is the first of its kind in India. The GMP facility houses four dedicated process lines for non-chemotherapeutic products and one process line exclusively for chemotherapeutics. Our goal is to ultimately take our developed products to clinical trials. In addition, our faculty profile includes scientists who have been awarded prestigious fellowships such as the Inspire Fellowship, the Ramalinga Swami Fellowship and the Ramanujan Fellowship. The center also actively collaborates with several reputed international researchers. We have also successfully launched three innovative MTech programs in nanomedical science, molecular medicine and nanotechnology and renewable energy, which were first of their kind in India. Inspired by research, inspired to serve. Thank you for the patience to watch that video. As you can see, we are so well established with uh, facilities and labs. So now I want to talk about the academics that we have at our center. So I just put down the PG programs that we have. Uh, these are postgraduate academic programs and there are several courses that we are offering and it, it reflects the kind of excitement nationwide in some of these areas. One is an MSc program or an MTech program in nanobiotechnology. Now, MSc is more science oriented, MTech is a professional degree which has more of a technology emphasis. So both are offered. If you have a B.Tech, you, go, you join an M.Tech program. If you have a B.Sc., you join an M.Sc. program. And nanobiotechnology, and I'll give you a brief background about it, is a very interesting uh, and dynamic area which has enormous potential. 
um, and the second is an MSC or an MTech in molecular medicine. Now this is a very popular program. There's a lot of interest in molecular medicine uh, by students and it's nice to see that they're learning about it. And nationwide there's a lot of interest. Uh, part of the reason why it is not being offered everywhere is because the kind of facilities you need to support such an interdisciplinary program is not easy to come by. And so our center has had the potential and the capacity to do it, so we are doing it. The third program is uh, an MSc or an MTech program in nanoscience and technology. So this program, now as you know, nanoscience and nanotechnology is a phenomenally rapidly growing area with so many applications in electronics, computer sciences, devices, uh, engineered products, and so on. So every field of engineering uh, has applications in nanoscience and technology. So having at the PG level that capacity to know how bringing in nanoscience and technology can strengthen the application is very, very important. And there are many devices like batteries, solar cells, sensors, other devices, smart materials, so on, catalytic materials. All of these are now very much engineered at the nanoscale. And so today, we really cannot avoid engineering devices without nanoscale engineering. So it's very important now to understand and be thorough about these fields of nanoscience and technology, and that is the engineering aspect of it, which is emphasized. The, 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 the last part I want to mention is, we have a very exciting dual degree program at the University of Arizona. So a student joining for MSc or MTech in the same two year period can take courses with the University of Arizona online uh, and get a full fledged MS degree in cell and molecular medicine. It's not an online degree. It's a full fledged degree that the same as the degree you would get if you went to University of Arizona, but you end up just staying here in India at Amrita interact with the University of Arizona and get a PG degree, a BMS degree, uh, which is the same degree as a student who actually goes there. You could go there if you, have, if you so wish and you wish to spend the money to have that experience, but you don't necessarily have to. And this kind of a collaboration globally, internationally, is so important when you're talking about cutting edge areas. And this partnership with the University of Arizona is really enervated and, and energized our program as well as it has energized theirs. And this partnership is something that we have and which strengthens our overall interdisciplinary uh, platform. Students have the opportunity to take up a dual degree when they join without taking any more additional credits or additional time. So they, it's probably the lowest cost dual degree program with the top ranked university in the US that you can get in India. And so I think it's a great opportunity for many of you to look at a global, look at it in a global way. How can you work with other countries and other scientists and so on. So uh, very briefly uh, about what these fields are, and I don't want to spend too much time because I know that uh, I just have half an hour. So biotechnology, what is biotechnology? Although we are not offering a course in biotech, we are offering a course in nanobiotechnology. So it's important to know what is nanobiotechnology as opposed to biotechnology. Biotechnology is basically any technology that is biologically derived. It, for example, we use yeast to make beer, we use mold to make penicillin, uh, we use microorganisms to break down toxic waste, to break down oil spills. So any biological uh, you know, materials that are used in a technology to solve problems becomes a field of biotechnology. You can make hardy plants with tissue culture technologies. You can synth make synthetic insulin out of recombinant technology. 
we can actually develop energy technologies using the biology that we learn. For example, plants convert sunlight into energy. How do the plants do that? What are these chloroplasts that are used to convert energy? Can we use that for our energy technology? All of these actually comes under the realm of biotechnology and that includes genetic technologies we can use to understand how our genes work, how do you edit them, how do you sequence them and so on. So, but the key aspect of what we are offering is nanotechnology. Now nanotechnology is technology at the nanoscale and I am I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the field of nanotechnology. Nanoscale is something that is any device that makes use of scales of 100 nanometers or less. One nanometer is one billionth of a meter. So 100 nanometers is very, very small. So it's sort of almost, uh, you know, a lakh times smaller than the diameter of your hair. So we are talking of scales that are very small and those scales, the properties of a material changes a lot. And so how do you bring in nanotechnology to biotechnology? Uh, you can, uh, you know, do that. But first, how do you use nanotechnology itself? Because we have a course in nanomaterials and nanosciences. We can make new devices, we can make new batteries, we can make new solar cells, new sensors, uh, new materials, processing technique, like we can make graphene, carbon nanotubes, things that then can be used in devices to improve the performance of the devices. All of these things are now routine, it's new. Uh, I don't want to say it's routine, but it's new and it's taken hold and there's a lot happening in India. and. When you bring in the bio to the nanotechnology, you get a completely new field. Uh, as you know, you may know, the body is full of nanomaterials. Proteins are nanomaterials. Okay, it's the cellular proteins that are expressed on the surface of cells are nanomaterials. So your bone is made up of nanominerals that are nanoscale in size. So a lot of materials within the body already nanoscale. So if you bring in nanotechnology to interact with the biological system, you can get wonderful new ways to work with uh, the biology of the body, to work with new medical solutions and so on. I just want to show you briefly, I don't have too much time. Like if you look at a butterfly, uh, you'll see that the wings of a butterfly is made of nanofibers. So if I go higher and higher in magnification, you'll see that as you go up in magnification, you see these lattice-like structures which are made up of nanofibers. You see here the nanofibers. This nanofiber structure is what creates a very strong uh, wing, lightweight, strong wing. So the nature has been using these for a long time. Our own body has 15 trillion cells. These cells are all interconnected to each other through an extracellular matrix. So the cells come together and create tissues. Tissues come together and create the human being. And at the level of the cell, nanomaterials can act at the level of the cell because they're much, much smaller than cells. They can enter cells, they can deliver drugs to cells. If you have a molecular, if you have a molecule as in molecular medicine, you can deliver these molecules to cells. And these interactions between cells at the molecular level and medicines and nanomaterials is a realm of nanobiotechnology and molecular medicine. So you, you can see here cells interacting with nanofibers. I'll just go directly here. You can see the cells don't attach very well to the microfibers. But if you look at the nanofibers, which are the fine fibers between the micro, the cells are very happy. They interact very well. So the biocompatibility is much better. So molecular medicine, again, coming back to molecular medicine, is the field where you put the molecules to work for you. How do you understand the origin of diseases? Where are the defects in your molecules? Are there defective genes? Is there defective signaling? How do the proteins work? Or what are the bad proteins that you have created? 
what so called plaque proteins for example when plaque proteins build up in the brain you can get alzheimers so how do these defective proteins develop an increase in quantity how does the immune system work what are the ways that the immune system can be suppressed which can cause you to get certain diseases for example cancer itself is in a sense an immunological uh disorder because the immune cells are not attacking the cancer as they should so the cancer is able to go freely and uncontrolled so can we use external molecules to correct the defects can we use external molecules to prevent the immune system from getting too suppressed these are all many new and hot areas that are being researched on and is being used to diagnose diseases as well as to treat diseases so molecular medicine research looks at inflammatory diseases it looks at cardiovascular diseases neurological disorders cancer diabetes so it looks at infectious diseases so you have infectious diseases lifestyle diseases all of these are handled by molecular medicine research so here is a picture of our students who have developed and these are the nanobiotechnology students who have developed this nano mask Uh, which is a mask that is used to get highly efficient protection against the coronavirus and these are students who are wearing the mask at our center they have developed it they have developed it in house and now it is available to all of our campuses and all of our students so it's a practical application of nanobiotechnology for actually making a practical so i briefly tell you what are all the opportunities in these three areas molecular biology molecular medicine uh, nanobiotechnology and nanoscience and technology so in molecular medicine there are pharma companies biotech companies and hospitals um that are there which is really grown tremendously in india as you know india is the probably the number one producer of the largest number of quantity of medicines and pharmaceutical products in the world and lot of companies have set up their manufacturing plants here for drugs and there's a huge demand for talented professionals like you with um, either a nanobiotechnology background or a molecular medicine background there are biotech companies which are responsible to do the more basic science inventions and creative discoveries and new drugs and these companies there are several of them many of them and i think i have some names for you for example some of these companies are very big sun pharma biocon novart is set up a big facility in india there are also indian companies like indian drugs and pharmaceuticals there is also research companies research centers like national center for cell science uh, advanced genomic institute and so on so reddy's labs johnson and johnson all of these companies are uh, hiring up some many of our students and after studying molecular medicine you can get very good jobs as application specialists or researchers or or laboratory managers and so on and uh, the opportunities both in molecular medicine are very very good most of our students have not had any problem getting placed I mean some of them go to companies some of them go abroad or some of them do pg or phd degrees and so on and uh, nanobiotechnology is an area that has uh, really really flourished now and uh, it we the companies both the new field is looking for professionals who can combine the strengths of biotechnology with nanotechnology because the two fields come together in many ways and we can increase the efficiency of products that are developed by biotechnology using nano scale and after uh, nanobiotechnology also we can look at pharma companies biotech companies nanotech companies so 
all of these are not hypothetical companies. These are actually companies that have established themselves in India. And I can give you some examples. There are many companies that are there, uh, which are uh, Bharat Biotech, Pfizer, uh, Serum Institute, uh, Biocon, and so on. And these companies are hiring scientists in nanobiotechnology, which is used to combine and integrate nanotechnology with. Uh, I all in this list, by the way, uh, there is uh, the the pure nanotech companies are not listed. They are also these are also the companies that are hiring our students. There are many nanotech companies that have started, which is really helping uh, bring up our value to our courses. And nanoscience and technology, which is the engineering side of it, is an area where there is a huge potential. A lot of companies are developing sensors, smart devices, batteries, solar cells. And these companies are also uh, nanotech companies, engineering firms, energy related companies. And here, this is the list that I really want you to look at. There are a lot of companies which are, uh, have uh, nano materials specifically and nanotechnology specifically as a focus, whether it is in biology or whether it is not in biology. For example, add nanotechnologies bottom of technology corporation, advanced nanotech labs, even other uh, bigger companies like Tata Power, Solar, they're all looking at nanotech products. Um, and uh, even Tesla has set up uh, you know, a facility in India. Um, so many companies which are nanotech oriented, engineering oriented, device oriented, have come to India and they are all looking for young talent uh, in these interdisciplinary areas. So the uh, nanoscience and technology, uh, your role as in the engineering side will be either in research or in manufacturing or uh, you can use these to help in the synthesis of these materials, characterization of nanomaterials. So there's a lot of potential and a lot of need for specialists who have a strong understanding of nanotechnology and nanomaterials and can bring these skills to the company to help them develop new products involving nanotechnology. Some of the students that I just shown here are students who have gone on to become professors at IITs, professors at major national institutes, uh, they've gone on to US, they've gone to Australia, they've gone to Japan, and uh, some of them are doing very well in companies here. So uh, these students are a small list of some of the students are shown here um, and are doing extremely well. Uh, some of the recent students that went, Dr. Smriti Padma Kumar is now in Northeastern University in US. And she is uh, doing her postdoctoral work there and is planning to work after that in a company there. So the success of our students has, that's the, the final test of how we are doing. Every student who has come to these interdisciplinary programs, which is somewhat unconventional in the sense of the old way of you know, traditional engineering, traditional medical degree, uh, these students who looked at interdisciplinary areas are really finding success. They're getting jobs, they're getting placed, they're doing exciting things. They're going abroad or if they don't want to, they're doing well here. So the lesson I want to leave you with is that when you look at your career, even in the PG field, please look at it as an opportunity to grow and get experience and training in interdisciplinary areas which will open up the, the potential for finding jobs in a multiple different places. So with that, I wish you all the best and thank you very much for your time.